So what are we going for here? Is it going to be funny? I really want to make like a serious nature doc. This is our chance. We can start with interviewing Terry. We should definitely talk to Brody and Pat from the video. We can do uh, talking head bits like The Office. Should we talk to your cousin? No, he won't be helpful. Hi, my name is Chris White. Is it going to be funny? Yo, Brody, take a video of this. I'm going to rough that cloud. What the sh Yeah, so I don't think they'll ever find the money or the bodies. So can you just tell the audience a little about the vampire beaver? Sure. Well, it's the vampire beaver is a local creature that's been spotted in these parts since I was a kid, which, of course, wasn't too long ago. So I've seen it in the woods or the country or the backyard. It's a dangerous animal. Could you tell us what's so dangerous about it? Well, it's a vampire beaver. That pretty much says it all. You hear bat and you think, oh, like Batman, that's fun. You hear vampire bat. It has the tail of a beaver. It has the teeth of a beaver, but it also has the teeth of a vampire. Some people have said they've seen it fly. Have you ever seen one? No, not personally. So you have actually witnessed a vampire beaver Pardon? You spotted a vampire beaver in your backyard, is that correct? Yes, I've seen a vampire. No, a vampire beaver. Oh yes, that was just the other week. I saw it in my backyard. It went out of the woods and back in. Just one? Just one. Is it possible there's more than one in the woods? Maybe. What did it look like? Big claws, dark brown fur. It had beaver teeth, but also had vampire teeth. It was about four feet, four or five feet long. Very scary. Okay, now tell me about the vampire. So this is the person you're basing the whole thing on? Well, not just her. I mean, everyone knows about the vampire beaver. Right, but it's like an urban legend. She's the only one who you talk to who's seen it. Well, we're going to talk to the guys who got the video later. Then why is she first? Well, because she's letting us film in her woods and she saw it. She said she saw a vampire. Man, it actually sounds pretty convincing. So can you tell us about the incident in 1984? The incident? Uh, well, what do you mean? What incident? The incident in which a young boy went missing in the woods before... Oh yes, I do remember. We were playing hide-and-seek in the woods, and it was the 80s, so people weren't as cautious about letting their kids just kind of run around and do whatever at all hours of the day. We had been playing for a few hours when Mum called us for supper. So I yelled out to everyone, and I, I thought everyone heard me. We were all over the woods, so some of us were very far away. It's possible that not everyone heard me. We got back to the house and my friend Mark wasn't with us. He was with us when we left, so we went back to look for him. It took us 30 minutes to find his body. His body was really torn up. Some people said that it looked like some sort of like jagged knife job. But I knew it was beaver teeth crossed with vampire teeth. So you and your friend saw the vampire beaver and got it on camera? Yeah, it was crazy. Can you tell us about the experience? We, we, we almost died. You almost died? Yeah, we were, we were so close and, you know, it's, it's part of vampire. So tell us a little bit about the encounter since it's unclear in the video. Well, we were both walking through the woods and then I told him to take a Snapchat because I was going to rip a giant cloud and send it to our friend. But then something moved in the bushes behind me. And we're both from around here, so we knew exactly what it was. I jumped, he jumped, and then it got away before we could get any more on video. How big was it? <sighs> Must have been five, maybe seven feet long. Real low on the ground though. Do you have any idea why it approached you? Or at least why it got so close? Um, my friend dropped a container of chocolate covered pretzels in the snow, right near the bush where we saw the vampire beaver. I swear there were less chocolate covered pretzels after the vampire beaver left. Where's your friend? Uh, he's pretty antisocial. He didn't want to be on camera. What is this again? A short film or something? It's a documentary. Hi, my name is Chris White, and this is The Hunt for the Vampire Beaver. It's called The Hunt for the Mysterious and Elusive Vampire Beaver. Well, the whole title's too long to say in the intro. Is this the intro? Well, why wouldn't it be? You saying your name? A deadly breed of beaver. Very rare. Only heard of to have been seen in Pictou County. I have never seen it myself, but I've heard about it my whole life. And in this documentary, we are going to not only capture it on film, but we are going to potentially capture it in real life. So, like, we're gonna trap it. 
Yes, that's the plan. How are we going to do that? Well, I'll tell you how after we're, we finish filming the scene. Is it done yet? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess this is all the scene has to be. You want to film your interview now? Well, actually, let's, let's see what you got first. Why'd you zoom in on my face? I thought it was funny. Wait. Wait, can we actually, like, take this light and put it underneath? You know, pointing up at me? Yeah, sure. I don't see why not. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike. Me and Chris have a YouTube channel where whoa, we... Whoa, whoa. Slow down. Just try to relax. Breathe. Focus. Take a deep breath. Sit up straight. Don't forget to breathe. And just talk naturally. Okay. Are you ready? I can't breathe when thinking about it. That's normal. Hi. My name is Mike Bandersnatch, and together, Chris and I share a YouTube channel. It's a bit of comedy and a bit educational. We just try to always make something interesting and entertaining. That didn't sound right. I don't like that. All right. We always try to make something real and important. How's that? I like how that sounds a lot more. We'll use that. All right. We've been making videos for a couple of years now. Recently, Chris has begun to lean more into the wilderness adventure stuff. Which is fine. I mean, I'm behind the camera a lot more now. Uh, I, it's not really a huge problem. I just kind of wish we'd use my ideas again. He's not even here right now. I wouldn't be saying this. He's just using the bathroom. You have the pine cone? Yeah. And the bait? Yeah. Ready to go? Yeah. Okay, we should set up the tripod to get a shot of us both walking into the... So, do you want to tell the audience what we're doing right now? Well, this is the first trap. Uh, we're going to put chocolate-covered pretzels on the ground and then use this as bait for the vampire beaver and uh, wait for it to show up. When it takes the bait, how do we catch it? Uh, we're just going to bag it and take it from there. What if it comes while we're setting up the other traps? Well, if we get back and it's like eating all the bait, we'll at least know that what Patrick said was right. Let's go set another trap deeper in the woods. Look for, like, vampire beaver tracks. That would tell us where to uh, set up the next trap. I can't find any tracks. Where'd you find the tracks in the snow earlier? They were right here last time. The snow must have covered them up. How many vampire beavers do you think there are in town? One, maybe a few. There's probably, like, a family, at least. They're more common out in the country. Where'd you hear that? Well, I mean, come on, man. Like, just in town. Like, we've heard about this our whole lives. What are you doing? I'm just getting something out of the bag. What is it? I'll have to do something for the next trap. So, this is like one of those pine cone bird feeders that they cover in peanut butter, except to attract the vampire beaver, I covered it in salt and chocolate. This is the second trap. Well, yeah, why not? It looks like a turd. Well, why do you have to question everything I do? Because it's all stupid. This isn't going to catch a beaver. Well, maybe if we hang it from the tree like this. Maybe what? Don't tell me you think it's going to fly like Terry told you. Well, it's like a mythical creature. It's an urban legend. Well, do you have any better ideas of how to catch it? Dude, hey, hey you, get out of here! What the fuck? He actually sat here and ate all the chocolate covered pretzels. Did you bring any extra? Well, I brought one case extra, but I already ate like half of them. What? Well, give me one. Well. We gotta save the rest of them for the next trap. Well, let's go check the other trap before it gets messed with too. I, I guess no vampire beavers have found it yet. Chris, I don't think this is gonna attract any vampire beavers. Why not? Honestly? Yes, be honest. Do you want me to turn the camera off? I don't think the vampire beaver is real, or at least you don't have any evidence that it's real, and it's killing the documentary. I think we should go talk to your cousin and... Well, once we capture it... We're not going to catch one, Chris. Definitely not like this. I don't know if I want to help you on this one. Are you going to leave? Yeah. Then leave. Okay, so Mike left. It's, uh, it's just me now. The first trap didn't work, but this next one is foolproof, so... Only, it can only be a matter of time until Vampire Beaver shows up. Okay, update. It's now 10 p.m., uh, I haven't been able to feel my toes for a little over an hour now, and it doesn't look like there's any vampire beavers coming tonight. 
I think it might be time to call it quits for the night. Hey man, can you make me some hot chocolate? Sure. Did you find any vampire beaver? Okay, I don't know if this is going to be itself part of the documentary or if it's just going to be behind the scenes, but this is just me looking at the first day of footage. Hey! Hey! You get out of here! I don't know if I got any footage I can use. Oh, I guess we left our mics on during this. I didn't realize. I've got to remember to turn the mics off after we're done recording. Hey, it's Chris. I was just wondering what the plan was. I mean, I don't know, are you coming back to the documentary or coming back to the channel? It, just text me. Nan, I still can't feel my toe. I think we should go to the hospital. So what do you want me to do? Well, Mike left the documentary, so I needed a new cameraman. Me? Yeah. No, 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 no. Just reintroduce yourself to the audience. I'm Pat. Great. It, it's leaning a bit. Sorry. You gotta fix it. Uh, okay. Uh, so, all right, you ready? <laughs> yeah. What's the plan again? We are going to go into the woods and try and capture a vampire beaver. Do you think, like, we should have weapons or something? What? Well... Like, if there's a vampire beaver, we should probably have weapons to protect ourselves. Well, let's just try and capture it, and we'll try not to get too close. Oh, if we do, I'll give it the old SHASHA! So, we've been out here for a couple hours walking around, trying to find the vampire beaver. Doesn't look like we're going to have any success today. I think it's time to call it quits for the day and go back inside. Hey Chris, are you just going to keep on coming out here every day? I mean, we'll, we'll check different spots. I was just thinking, like, it's pretty rare that you really get to see one. Maybe you should just use... What? Are, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Ugh. Ouch, dude. Are you okay? No, I, I broke my glasses. Glass got in my eye. But it's not my good eye, so I don't get to wear glasses. That's good. I'm going to show you the assembly cut of the documentary, just like what I have done so far before the ending. Hi. My name is Chris White, and this is The Hunt for the Vampire Beaver. Big claws, dark brown fur. It has the teeth of a beaver, but it also has the teeth of a vampire. Very scary. I'm proud. So, we've been out here for a couple hours walking around, trying to find the vampire beaver. Doesn't look like we're going to have any success today. I think it's time to call it quits for the day and go back inside. Hey! Hey! You get out of here! Well, what do you think? I think we should probably try and find the beaver. Like, it's kind of lame if we don't end up finding it. I don't know how much longer we can spend searching for it, though, man. Well, we could try and fake finding it. I don't think it would be scientifically right to fake the finding of a new species. Well, it's not new, you know. Everyone knows it already exists. Isn't this what you're basing it off of? That's when I realized I had to do what Mike told me to do in the very beginning, and talk to my cousin. So you really made this documentary? Well, we haven't made the ending yet. So this is the assembly cut. I told you before you started all of this, the vampire beaver was a lie. I know. And you said you had proof. I remember. So you want to introduce yourself? My name is Ethan, I'm Chris's cousin, and I'm by far the smartest person you've interviewed so far. Can I vape in this? I told Chris and Mike like a dozen times that the vampire beaver wasn't real. It's just a legend made up to scare kids and explain local mysteries. It's like Bigfoot or Sam Squanch, except not real. I told you you should have been listening to me instead of that Terry guy. Where's Mike anyway?
Oh, do you want me to put a mic on? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me in first. It's freezing outside. So you just want me to sit like this? Like, yeah, that's fine. All right. Since I left the documentary, I've been staying busy. I learned how to play the guitar. I've been creating some original music and stuff. We've talked since you left about why you left. Yeah. And how you just didn't believe in the vampire beaver. And I have some big news for you today. I did what you told me. I went to see, to see my cousin. And I came to the conclusion that it's not real. I, I told you. Yeah, you were right. Okay, so then what's this documentary even about? Why are we even still filming? Well, there was that event in 1984 with the missing kid. If that wasn't a rabid animal, it must have been someone, right? Right. I did some thinking. I spent a lot of time on this. I think we should tell them about Terry. What about Terry? Well, you know, just how we know him. Could you tell the audience a bit about Terry? We met Terry because he knew Chris's dad. Uh, we did construction on his house a few summers back. Terry's some crazy old man you dipshits hang out with. He's like if Doc Brown wasn't smart, he was just crazy and hung out with teenagers. We eventually just became friends with him. He even buys his beer. He's crazy, he's divorced, nothing he says makes sense. So what I want to ask is, do you think Terry might have been the person in the woods who killed the boy? I, I don't know, man. Definitely. We know him pretty well. This kind of a huge thing we're accusing him of. Well, Terry has to be lying about some of the things he says. He just goes on and on bullshitting forever. I never really wanted to say it when he was proving my point, but you know what I'm talking about. I've got him on camera from the other interviews in between takes saying some pretty weird shit. Like what? Me and my buddies used to stay out every weekend looking for that vampire beaver. We knew we were going to kill it for what it did to my friend. I'm 5'9", but some guys who are 5'11 only come up to my chest. You catch more flies with honey than vinegar. But do you know how you catch a vampire beaver? How? Oh. A human sacrifice. You know in Indiana Jones 2 when that guy rips out the other guy's heart and eats it? I don't remember him eating it. Well, anyways, I've done that. And I ate it. Yeah, this is all super incriminating. We should definitely interview him again. Yeah. So, does this mean you're back in the documentary? Only if you make me executive producer. Deal. So how does this documentary end? Well, do you have any ideas, executive producer? We'll interview Terry again, and then we'll see where to go from there until we have a solid answer. And at the end, we'll have uh, blocks of text that come up in a biopic and explain where the characters are now. Uh, we really should be quick about this. I have to get to hockey practice. I play for the Scotians. Well, we'll try to make this as quick as possible. Did you find the vampire beaver? No, that's actually why we brought you back to talk. We've actually come to the conclusion that the vampire beaver isn't real. No, that's not... Well, how do you explain the murders? Well, we reviewed the case that you presented about your friend Mark. We now believe the police's assessment of a jagged knife job is actually more likely than the vampire beaver theory. Well, I, I, I've seen the vampire beaver. When? Well, the police said that they could never find the killer. We think the police were looking in the wrong direction. We don't think they looked into any of the other kids being the killer. Okay, um, I think I should stop now. Why? Well, because I have a hockey game. I already told you, Chris. You understand how suspicious this interview will look if you leave now, right? Um, well, we don't have, we don't have to use this. Like, we, we can film this again, right? Uh, okay. So, should we call the cops? As executive producer, I think we should finish editing the documentary. We all dance, we all dance.
keep going until I set this up.